This is a Defocus Media production. What's up, everyone? It's your favorite optometrist, Dr. Daryl Glover. And I'm Dr. Jennifer Lyerly, resident optometry nerd. And welcome to Defocus Media, optometry's number one podcast, where we discuss the hottest topics, latest technology, eyewear, practice management, and more. So sit back, relax, and defocus. What's up, what's up, everyone? It's your favorite optometrist, Dr. Daryl Glover. Happy Monday. The Defocus Media team is back in the building. We're super excited. We have another incredible show in store for you. Today, I'm super excited to learn a little bit more, to educate myself by the greats in eye care. We have my man, Dr. Jeffrey Farding, and the one and only Dr. Aaron Roof that's going to educate us and take us to the next level. But we also have our student optometrist, Viviana Lee. Um, who's going to really partner with Dr. Roof and, and socialize the case, to help us learn how to deal with contact lens complications, you know, red eyes, all that jazz. We're going to learn a lot tonight. But before we get this party started, got to give a shout out to my partner in crime, Johnson & Johnson Vision. Johnson & Johnson Vision has stepped their game up. They know that they need to invest in the future of eye care. And you know the future of eye care are the students, new graduates, and even us season ODs, right? So I want to give a special shout out to them. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you, Dr. Moody, for seeing that there was a need for this. And today, let's go ahead and get this party started. Now, before we jump into everything, we got to introduce everyone on the show. So, Dr. Aaron, if you don't mind maybe sharing your background, because, you know, you're the one that has really created this um, opportunity for us. Um, so if you don't mind sharing, you know, a little bit about yourself, where you practice and all that other jazz. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for having me again, Daryl. Um, I'm Erin Roof. Uh, I'm an assistant professor and chief of the Cornea and Contact Lens Services at the Southern California College of Optometry. Um, so yeah, I teach all things contact lenses here and um, see patients and do research. And yeah, I've really enjoyed this series that we've done um, working with students and just talking about contact lenses. Isn't it cool? It brings me back to being in school, right? Oh, uh, funny yeah. story. I, I actually get to travel around to different optometry schools on behalf of my team, my eye doctor. And I was just at my school, PCO, Salas University. Shout out to them. And um, during that time, they were going through what we call the 35-minute practical. And I heard that word or that term, and I almost just like <laughs> hit the ground and started to run because I was like, oh, man, I'm not ready for this. I was like, I graduated in 2011, and you guys still haven't changed the name of that test yet? I got to step the game up and change it. That thing gives me nightmares. Do you all recall doing that when you were in school as well? Absolutely. Definitely. I'd be terrified. <laughs> right, right. We have right? called Five Station, and I think it sparks fear in everyone just the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I tell you what, I mean, right. Dr. Roof was one of my uh, one of my professors in a manner of speaking back at Ohio State. So I was. I'm, uh, awesome. I'm getting terrified just seeing her again. I'm a <laughs> <laughs> I heard I spark fear, yeah, in students. Yeah. I think oh my, my, oh <laughs> my. So Dr. Fairnick, man, if you don't mind, maybe share your background as well and maybe a fun fact or something cool that you did this past weekend that I just learned about. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I've got a three location retail practice in uh, Richmond, Virginia, bringing contact lenses to the masses down here. And uh, yeah, this weekend I got to officiate a wedding, which was a lot of fun. Uh, the whole ceremony, I kept mentioning contact lenses. I don't know if that was what the bride and groom wanted, but uh, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Uh, Viviana, let's get a little bit more about your background. Yeah, so I'm currently a third year student at the Southern California College of Optometry, and I grew up in Southern California, and we actually just took boards a couple weeks ago, so I'm excited to be here. Fantastic. Congratulations how did you, being done with that. I know. Congrats. And how do you feel after Thank boards? You. Well, I think that the biggest relief is knowing that it's over and we're kind of in this period of ignorant bliss until <laughs> the beginning of May. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, let's get a shout out to all the students, all the new graduates, all the season ODs out there that's tuning in. Feel free to shout out where you're from. We'll definitely post it on the banner on the bottom. But let's go ahead and get this party started. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, myself and Dr. Jeffrey uh, Farnick, we're going to jump off and we're going to let uh, future optometrist Viviana Lee and uh, Dr. Aaron Roof uh, start this case and socialize it and, you know, give us some knowledge and some insight. So let's make this happen. Are y'all ready for it? Ready? Yeah, let's do it. Thanks, Daryl. All right. We'll see you guys later. All right. 
Okay, Bibi, thanks for joining me tonight. Um, now that you're now that you can live your life again after part one, right? We can yeah. talk about things kind of a little more casually and in a fun way. So um, we're gonna jump into this case tonight. Um, I'll kind of lead and then kind of ask you questions um that uh, about the case as we move through. So mm -hmm. um as Daryl, as Dr. Glover said, um, thanks to Johnson and Johnson for sponsoring uh our grand rounds tonight. Um already did our introduction, so that's great. Um, okay, so here's our case. We have a 38-year-old female. She's coming in complaining of uncomfortable contact lens wear in both eyes. So this is a really common chief complaint for a lot of soft contact lens wearers. Um, she says she's been uncomfortable for the last six months. Um, it's definitely worse at the end of the day um, at work. She's a nurse, so she's you know on and off of screens, charting, kind of looking all at all different distances throughout the day. Um, and she's saying, you know, she's getting all of the symptoms, burning, aching, fluctuating vision, eyes feeling tired, kind of every symptom that you could associate with discomfort. Um, history wise or sort of ocular systemic history wise, no real systemic health or ocular health history. Um, I'm sure we want to know about her contact lenses. She's wearing a monthly replacement lens, um, single vision lens, spherical design. Um, she's pretty compliant. In fact, she might be too compliant. She's replacing that lens every three to four weeks. So she's kind of getting so uncomfortable that at the third week, she's like, maybe I'll replace it sooner. Um, she never sleeps in her lenses and um, she's using, a, you know, you ask her about solution use and she kind of says, oh, I don't know, something generic that I picked up at Target. Um, I know the text is small here, so I'll just kind of summarize. This is our anterior segment and contact lens fit assessment. Um, again, lots of words here. But the, the main picture is everything looks pretty good on the eye. The contact lens fit looks okay. There's not a lot of deposits. Um, her lids look pretty healthy. Her ocular surface looks good. There's not a lot of staining. It doesn't appear that she has really deficient um, tear volume on the surface. So I guess with just that information alone, what's kind of going through your head about what could potentially be causing um, this pa uh, patient's discomfort? Yeah, so there's a lot of really great points here, and it's really great that we have all this information about this patient. And so one of the key aspects that really stands out is that, again, like you said, this patient is wearing a monthly lens. And so for this patient, we really want to start considering maybe switching this patient to a daily disposable contact lens instead with good wettability, because this will really help prevent lens deposit buildups that are really common in patients that wear monthly lenses. And this can can also really help improve her comfort as well. And another aspect that we can talk about is her solution use. Again, we don't really have the information about what solutions she's using. And so maybe next time we can ask her to bring in her solution bottle so we can take a really good look at the solution she's using because we want to start asking the questions like, is she using an older solution? Is she using um, a solution that might contain an older preservative such as thimerosal or chlorhexidine? Because those preservatives can be really irritating to the eyes. And so those are some questions that I would definitely ask the patient. And one of the biggest things that really stands out in her history is that she's experiencing this eye strain, especially at the end of the day after she's charting. And so when I hear patients complain about that, I tend to think of um, eye strain, especially with digital computer use. And with COVID, we all know that we're on the computer a lot. So I'm sure that a lot of us are also experiencing that discomfort that comes with um, computer use. And so I think that this really indicates that we should start having a discussion with this patient about taking digital breaks and taking care of her digital hygiene as well. And so these are just some thoughts that run through my head when I look at this patient's case. Yeah, that that's really excellent. Like you really, uh, narrowed in on like several different factors that could be influencing comfort. And I think that's so important to consider that, you know, comfort isn't sort of unidimensional. It's usually multidimensional. It's not caused by any one thing. Um, yeah, definitely. Daily disposable wear can eliminate a lot of problems with comfort. In fact, if she was in a daily disposable lens, we wouldn't even have to worry about the solution issue, right? Um, mm -hmm. We know that, you know, if a patient's using a generic solution, it's hard to kind of pinpoint what exactly is in that. And so if they're sensitive to a particular uh, preservative, it's hard to know what exactly um, that is. 
Um, so yeah, you really nailed it. I would definitely want to consider um, uh, switching to a daily disposable. If we aren't able to do that, you know, trying to get in a solution that we know is going to be effective for that, for whatever material she's using. And yeah, eye strain and sort of visual discomfort is something we want to consider as well. Um, you, know, you know, I like this case because it's a great opportunity to talk about contact lens discomfort as a whole and how we target contact lens discomfort. Um, the discomfort is probably the the most difficult um, thing we're going to treat and manage in our contact lens wearers. And part of the reason why it's because it's so difficult is that it is multidimensional and it's caused by so many different things. Um, I have a chart up here uh, that was um, or sort of a flow chart that was um, designed um, by a group of contact lens experts that just kind of came together to um, determine what the cause of discomfort was. And you can see how there's so many different factors that can influence our perception of comfort while we're wearing contact lenses. And unfortunately, most patients sort of self-treatment for contact lens discomfort is to discontinue wear. Um, and the same group kind of came up with this treatment algorithm of sort of, and I know, again, the words are small here. I don't think the words are as important as just to see the complexity of the algorithm for the, that they sort of determine to treat and manage contact lens discomfort, that there's so many different things that can influence our perception of discomfort that, you know, we have to consider all of these factors. So I thought for this case, we could kind of break it down into two main kind of groups of, or two kind of um, causes of discomfort that our patients tend to experience. So one is going to obviously be the ocular surface. So we want to optimize the ocular surface um, and make sure that everything we're doing for this patient is going to lead to sort of physical comfort. Um, so, so let's talk about that first. Um, you know, we already talked about some of these things, how we could optimize the ocular surface for this patient. We talked about increasing uh, replacement schedule. Um, taking regular breaks of the computer is part of optimizing the ocular surface because we know we tend to not blink very as much when we're looking at screens. Um, so taking regular breaks, a good excuse to, you know, take a mental health break at work throughout the mm -hmm. day. Um, I also like to talk to my patients about proactive lubrication. So this patient didn't really have significant signs of dryness on the surface, but, um, you know, lubrication with an artificial tear or um, especially for a monthly wearer like this, wearing a, or, or wearing a monthly lens using like a non-preserved artificial tear. Um, Proactive lubrication, you know, before they start to feel dry can sometimes help prevent discomfort, you know, onset in the future. So I like to talk to my patients about, you know, put a drop in in the morning, whether you feel dry or not, throw a drop in at lunchtime, whether you feel dry or not, that might prevent you from feeling dry at five o'clock or something. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of, you already touched on a lot of those ways of how to um, optimize the ocular surface. I want to move on next and kind of think about how we could optimize vision for this patient. And in order to do that, we kind of need to look at her um, visual data in, in this exam. Um, so I think it's really easy when a patient complains of discomfort to just look at the ocular surface, but I want to look now at her visual data. So um, we see that she's seeing really well with her habitual contact lenses. Um, a, a little bit of an over-refraction. I think if we stopped there, we might just move right along from that little bit of hyperopic over-refraction. And then we see the manifest refraction data there that we um, got after we took out the lenses. So what, what stands out to you here? Yeah, so looking at this visual data here, there is a couple points that stand out to me. The biggest one that stands out to me is that her over-refraction is a little bit plus which indicates that she might be a little bit over minus. But then when we look at her manifest refraction, and if we really compare that with the contact lenses that she's currently wearing, we can see that she definitely is over minus. And so this can really make a big impact on a patient's visual comfort because as a myope, um, when she's wearing contact lenses, she's already accommodating a little bit more than what she usually would with glasses. And if you factor on top of that, that she's over minus in her contact lenses, then she really has to accommodate through that contact lens and then accommodate through that extra minus as well. And so all that accommodating can make a really big impact on her visual comfort. 
And this can also touch a little bit on her digital device use as well, because when she's on the computer, the computer is set closer to her. And so she has to focus her eyes even more through those over minus contact lens in order to see clearly. And like what you said before, on the computer, she's most likely blinking less and she's not resurfacing that lipid portion of her tear layer as often as she really should to prevent that tear evaporation and um, discomfort. And so, um, again, like what you said, oftentimes when a patient complains of discomfort, we immediately go to ocular um, surface disease, looking at like their dry eye symptoms, looking at the contact lens that they're wearing. But in this case, I think that this really highlights how both um, visual comfort can make a really big impact on that patient um, successfully wearing and retaining that wear in her contact lenses. And in addition to this, I think another key point is that she's an emerging presbyope because she's about 38 old, years old and she's like on that brink of presbyopia. And so she's starting to already have that reduced accommodative amplitude um, due to her age. And so I actually think that this patient would be such a great candidate for soft multifocal lenses actually, because that additional plus power will really help with that visual fatigue that she might be feeling, especially on the computer as well. And so taking all these into consideration, there's a lot of ways that we can tackle this contact lens discomfort that she might be feeling by managing that ocular surface disease as well as taking care of her visual comfort. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, her, the power of her lenses here is just like setting her back in multiple ways. I mean, you just, you described it very elegantly. Um, so I won't even have to, to go into that any further. Um, but yeah, she's over minus and she's, already, you know, a, a myope of her magnitude already has to work a little harder in contact lenses than glasses. So being over minus only makes that work harder. And then on top of that, she's 38. So she's getting close to that presbyopic age range. You know, even presbyopes that are, you know, 38 year olds who may be able to sort of sustain uh, clear near vision up close, it might not be that comfortable, right? They're still working pretty hard to do that. So especially if she's over minus, that just makes it harder for her. Um, so yeah, you definitely touched on all of those things, the overcorrected myopia, the already existing emerging presbyopia added on top that she's kind of looking up close all day, all the time. So for this particular patient, um, we, um, so I, I guess this slide here is just uh, underlining what Vivi just said about sort of considering ocular surface comfort and visual discomfort. Um, for this particular patient, we just refit her into a daily disposable modality. We'll talk about um, when we pull uh, Dr. Farding in here, how to sort of think about choosing a daily disposable uh, lens. Uh, we refitted her into um, just her appropriate powers based on her manifest refraction. You know, it's so easy to just perpetuate and keep pulling the same power year after year, but I'm a big proponent of getting fresh data every single year to make sure that the power my patient has on their eye is the power they truly need. Um, we educated her on taking breaks. We educated her on why we were changing her into a daily disposable and to an updated power. Um, and when she came back a week or so later, her symptoms were improved. Um, and that's probably due to the combination of things that we did, right? We upgraded her into a daily disposable modality. We eliminated any discomfort that might've been caused by that uh, unknown solution. And we got her in a power that was appropriate for her. Um, and for this patient, that was enough. Just getting her in a single vision spherical lens that was the appropriate power kind of gave her that relief up close. But I completely agree with you. Um, a presbyo, or sorry, a multifocal, even before she's having like full presbyopic blur at near, is totally appropriate in this type of situation. And I actually have had lots of success fitting, um, you know, people in their 30s in low power uh, multifocals when they start having those types of symptoms of visual fatigue and discomfort in their lenses. And it's a great way to sort of think outside the box and use multifocals um, to kind of help your patients maintain contact lens wear as they move through emerging and early presbyopia. Um, so yeah, I think this would be a good time to, um, oh, this is just the final clinical data there. I'm, just, I'm moving right ahead, getting ahead of myself here. Um, so this would be a good time to pull in Jeff Farding and see what he has to say about some of these things. Um, hey, Jeff, good to see you again. I love everything that I was hearing there. 
Um, so daily disposables definitely will be my go-to for this patient. Um, Really, I, I start with daily disposables for pretty much everybody at this point. I definitely have patients that I'm happier when they're putting in into a reusable lens for various reasons, but I also, almost have to have a reason why I would want to not go the daily disposable with patients anymore. You get such great uh, improved comfort. Um, you don't have to worry about compliance. Compliance with daily disposables just is so much better in general than with a reusable lens. I saw a great comment earlier about is she is she rubbing her lenses enough? Man, I, nobody rubs their lenses enough. I can tell you she <laughs> definitely probably isn't. Just the amount that you're really supposed to rub those contact lenses. So. You know, you can play whack-a-mole with the solutions like you talked about, trying to figure out if she's got sensitivity to various preservatives. But to go into a daily, you just eliminate all those problems right away. You don't have to worry about solution sensitivity or issues with cleaning the lens. So a daily disposable, especially in this case, is just a, a great, great suggestion. Yeah. So, Jeff, how do you go about, like, choosing a daily disposable for your patients? Like, what, what goes into your thought process? Well, uh, a lot of factors. So in general, you want to think about uh, what the patient's going through. As time goes by, accommodation is declining, tear film stability is reducing with time, light scatter is increasing as we get older. And so in general, uh, I, I think the AccuView Oasis One Day Max lens uh, that we uh, she was fit in here is just an excellent choice. I've been fitting that lens a lot recently, and I've just fallen in love with it. Um, the uh, the OptiBlue light filter in there is so great. I've got patients... Uh, coming off their antidepressants because this lens is blocking so many blues for them. It's great. <laughs> um, so uh, we really want to think about what the patient's needs are. So she's having issues with comfort. This lens, uh, the AccuView Oasis One Day Max, has got the great tear-stable technology for maximum comfort, which optimizes wetting agent distribution throughout the lens and on the ocular surface, prolongs tear film stability. Uh, this lens was a great choice for getting rid of her comfort issues. And she might even be having, um, like we talked about, the, the aching feeling she's having with, with her eyes. Definitely, she's over minus. So that's one thing to consider. We're pushing our patient into almost into presbyopia with that. She's not really an emerging presbyopia yet, more than likely. She's kind of a, a presbyope, as I like to call these patients yeah. here. The, uh, <laughs> the patient in their 30s has been okay. over minus by their last provider. Um, so we can help that patient a lot just by cutting the minus out, extra minus out of her prescription. But giving her this uh, this great lens that has the OptiBlue light filter, we're reducing starburst halos, reducing light scatter, and really increasing subjective visual comfort a lot, as we're seeing with her reports coming in, feeling like her symptoms are greatly improved. So uh, I think the, the lens choice that you made here was was excellent. Yeah, I think I think that's great. Um, yeah, so I agree. Max is a, a really good lens that's new to the market. Um, so J&J is obviously our sponsor tonight. Um, so um, it's a good opportunity for us to talk about um, this new lens that's on the market. And I think this whole discussion is a good reminder that as clinicians, we want to make sure we're staying on top of the products that are available to us and what sort of the unique qualities are of those particular products. Because otherwise, I'm kind of playing... <laughs> I'm kind of playing whack-a-mole with like picking a lens in my trial room, right? If I don't have a reason and a why for why I'm picking a lens, then, you know, my patient could go anywhere and and, and get any any kind of care. And so, um, yeah, so the great thing about a lens uh, like the AccuView One Day Max, which is a new sort of premium daily disposable on the market, is that it has sort of an updated lubrication system that um, helps to improve comfort. So that helps us focus on um, that ocular surface aspect, but it also has a really novel optical design with this Opti Blue Light filter um, that is aimed at reducing the glare and halos that the blue and violet uh, side of the spectrum um, tend to cause the most. So in, an, in a time where we talk a lot about blue light, like all the time, right? I feel like I cannot scroll my Instagram feed without seeing somebody, you know, selling some blue light glasses or something. Um, this is kind of cool because it's not it's, it's really speaking to how blue light influences visual quality. And especially for someone like this patient, um, if she's getting any, um, you know, uh, discomfort, ones could kind of help with that. So again, just a good reminder that as clinicians, we need to have a reason and a why for what lens we're picking um, and, and how that might influence our particular patient, because the reason and why might be different depending on what our patients are experiencing. Um, so, uh, some other things I just wanted to point out here, um, you know, we always want to make sure, especially in these, um, you know, presbyopes, as Jeff would say, um, <laughs> that, that we're pushing plus in the refraction and, um, remembering to vertex their prescription because a quarter here, a quarter there, a plus can really make a difference. 
Um, when we're optimizing vision, we also want to, you know, make sure we're correcting astigmatism when that's appropriate with our um, contact lens wearers. And also, like we mentioned earlier, considering um, a multifocal for anyone who's presbyopic, but also those who might just be, um, man, I'm going to keep using that, Jeff, presbyopes. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to have buzzwords. That's what I'm good at. I, that's good. I like it. Um, any, any of those symptoms, I like to just be, you know, listening for those types of um, visual discomfort symptoms early. Um, so, yeah, I don't know, Bibi, any thoughts that come up for questions or anything as we kind of talk about that? Yeah, I think that these are such great points. I think that oftentimes, at least for me as a student, when I walk into the contact lens trial rooms, there's just so many contacts and it's kind of difficult to kind of like pick out which contact might be the best for our patients. But it's really great to hear that um, technology has continued to progress and that um, these AccuView Oasis Max lenses are a really great option for patients that want that additional blue light filter and might be experiencing like halos and glare, which could cause discomfort and therefore contact lens drop out. So I think that um, these are all really great points and I'm excited to see these more in the market. And if I could echo just one more thing about the uh, AccuView Oasis One Day Max lens. Um, so compared to the regular Oasis One Day lens, which I've been using for a long time now, and I absolutely am in love with the great contrast sensitivity that we all know that lens provides. Even compared to that lens, the Oasis One Day Max Opti Blue Light Filter here, uh, we're getting um, big improvements in uh, reducing light scatter by 20% compared to the Oasis one day, reducing halos by 30% and starburst by 23% in the trials that J&J's put, uh, put these lenses through. So I, you know, the optics that you get with the Oasis one day were already incredible. And to think that there's a lens that's even better now, I'm just, uh, just in love with it. That's great. Awesome. Well, this is kind of, you know, this has kind of been a more of a short and sweet case compared to some of our other grand rounds, but I think that's okay. Cause I think, um, well, it obviously it's okay, but, um, you know, it's just, a, again, hopefully you take home from this case that, you know, discomfort isn't just the ocular surface. That's certainly a very important part of it, but we need to consider our patients as a whole. And then also when we're choosing lenses for them, think about the different factors that a lens could, um, provide and bring to address each of our patient patients, unique symptoms. Um, so yeah, if you guys don't have any other comments or questions or thoughts, or buzzwords. Uh, I'd, I'd like to just echo one more great thing that Bivy said earlier. Um, yeah. This patient ended up doing great with this lens, so didn't have to jump into the uh, multifocal design. But yeah. you know, it's entirely plausible that maybe she might begin to struggle with near work more, especially in the next one, two, three years. At which point, going to that multifocal, I'm excited that lens is uh, already available for us. The yeah. pupil optimized design available in that lens. I know she's gonna love going to the Oasis One Day Max multifocal when she needs to make that jump. Yeah, exactly. And this, even if we don't go to a multifocal today with this patient, this is a really great time to, you know, plant the seed for a multifocal because she may Definitely. not be needing it right now, or maybe she's not ready to make that leap right now. Um, mm -hmm. But planting the seed now will make it a lot easier to transition next year or in maybe two years. Um, so it's not as much of a um, surprise at that point. So yeah, always good to talk about that to offer it and talk about it early and often um, as our patients kind of reach that point in life. Oh, I actually do have a question about yeah. the One Day Oasis Max. So oftentimes for multifocals, they don't come in very large toric powers. And so do these One Day AccuView, or sorry, Oasis Max lenses, do they come in higher astigmatism powers? That are yeah, so really disposable wear Right well? now they're just available in um, sphere powers, um, which, at this point, um, for as far as daily disposable multifocals go, we only have spherical powers um, for those yeah. daily disposable options. So mm -hmm. we're not there yet, but and eventually, um, I'm sure we'll get there where we'll, we will have toric daily disposable multifocal options for our patients. Um, so yeah, right now these are you know daily disposable multifocals are gonna you're gonna choose those for patients who have you know 0.75 diopters or less of astigmatism. Yeah. Good question. And I haven't had too many opportunities to kind of push beyond the 0.75, but with the great optics in this lens, the reduction of the uh, starburst and so forth, I wouldn't be surprised if I have some success fitting the, the one diopter, one and a quarter diopter uh, astigmatis in this lens. I just haven't had that much opportunity yet, but I will definitely report back and let you guys know. I expect it's going to work well. 
Okay, perfect. I'm glad to hear that because I'm currently almost like a minus one astigmatism cell power. And so hopefully <laughs> you will have powers for me by the time that I become a presio. Oh, well, maybe the fourth thing for optometry <laughs> student already worried about her, uh, her toric power and presbyopia. That's so far away. That's so far away, baby. You don't need to worry about that yet. <laughs> you know, hopefully technology would advance. Yeah. We will we'll fix you. We'll fix you then. Don't worry. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I think Daryl is somewhere out there. Uh, there he is. <laughs> Look at him. I'm right. here. I just reappear, right? <laughs> Great job, Luis. I just saw someone ch chime in saying they had success masking uh, more sill with this lens already. Great job, Luis. Yeah, I and I was going to piggyback on that. I've actually fit um, about a minus one, one and a quarter, and it's worked fairly well. And it's actually been against Great. the rule, too. So I was very nice. shocked. But due to right. the points that you brought up, uh, Jeff, that makes perfect sense, right? Just the yeah. extra uh, things that this lens produces. So I love that. Um, you know, I always take my notes. So I just kind of wanted to circle back and touch on some of the highlights for me this evening. Uh, number one, Viviana, you did a fantastic job. Oh, my goodness. You are a rock star. The future of eye care is in great hands. Continue doing a great work. And I love everything that you stated today. Uh, Thank you're you. still doing a fantastic job with uh, getting you where you need to be successful and uh, making sure these patients can truly live their best lives. But um, one thing that I wanted to uh, touch on, Viviana, is that you asked about a lens that corrects for astigmatism. Will this lens have it or does it have it? Mm -hmm. um, in order to get there, we got to fit these contacts more, right? Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a great opportunity for multifocal patients where we can really change their lives and elevate their lifestyles. And we can get more of these contacts from these vendors out there if we fit the contact lens more. I mean, right. we got to be real about it, right? When you're talking about dailies, that's a lot of contact lenses. And then you add a toric lens to the mix, that changes the game even more. And you add a multifocal to the mix, that changes it even more. So we have to fit them more in order to be able to get that wish. So um, when you have a patient that walks through your door, whether they're, uh, what'd you call it? pre pre presbyo, pre -presbyo. Or, uh, pre -presbyo. Pre -presbyo. Um, or a true traditional presbyo. Fit them with a multifocal contact lens. Don't do monovision. Don't do distance vision only and glasses over them. Now, true, there may be some patients that need that because not everyone can adapt to a multifocal. But this lens is a rock star and has fit extremely well in my practice. So make sure you take um, it to the next level with these patients and give them something that's going to accommodate their lifestyle the best. Mm -hmm. um, circling back, uh, Dr. Roof, I, I really love the proactive lubrication. I think that's huge, right? That is something that we need to do. Why not set the patients up for success from the beginning? Why wait till their eyes get dry? Um, you know, there's no perfect lens out there, but if you can really make that front surface feel comfortable, make sure you lubricate. Also stay well hydrated. It makes a big difference and educate your patients about their surroundings. A lot of times when patients have issues with their contacts, at least from my experience, it's something that's environmental, right? Maybe a fan or vent blowing right at their face at work and you're using this amazing technology, but if something's blowing air towards it, it's going to dry you out, right? So set them up for success and uh, that proactive lubrication, I think is huge. The other thing that I love, oh, looks like we have a question. What's your go-to preservative free before we go too far here, Dr. Aaron? Um, you know, I really don't play favorites, it, especially when it comes to preservative free. That's the biggest thing for me. I found that um, I, I actually just told a, stu a student this afternoon, sometimes artificial tears are like shampoo. What works for me doesn't work for you. And so, <laughs> um, you know, just try them out um, with my contact lens. I, I, again, just really encourage preservative free um, and kind of sample them and see what you like. Yeah, and I, like I could jump in there, too. Uh, I do have a favorite and. Uh, and not surprisingly, it's a Johnson Johnson product. Uh, I would be saying this even if this weren't sponsored by Johnson and Johnson, but uh, Blink for Contacts, I absolutely love. It's not preservative free, but it's got that vanishing preservative that breaks down yes. in UV light. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, it, it fits that bill for the preservative free contact lens that we're, uh, contact lens drop that we're looking for, in a manner of speaking. And it's got the bottle that's reusable. So it's, it's got the great convenience for that reason, too. Look at Dr. Faraday, always on brand. I love this guy. <laughs> I just have the best products. It's easy. Uh, me, I'm, I'm, I, I like Refresh, Refresh Digital. You know, I think that's a great option. I've had a lot of success in my practice with my patients. Um, but, you know, to you guys' point, you know, everyone is different, right? That's why we have different solutions for patients when they walk into the office. I think it really revolves around or, you know, you have to just figure out what that patient's doing in their lifestyle and be able to fit the right solution for them. 
Uh, got a couple more, and then I'll, I'll stop talking, and then we'll shout out the winners that are getting the gift card um, this evening. But um, the other thing is the innovation. I think leading with innovation. Um, you got to talk about innovation. If there's cutting edge technology that's available, talk about it. Don't mm -hmm. sit on it. Don't let your patients come in and educate you about it. You need to be educating them. You need to start that conversation ahead of time. You need to plant that seed the exam prior. Always offer your patients the latest and greatest and let them tell you that they don't want it. But don't assume they don't want it because of costs or because you don't have enough chair time. Step your game up and spend those extra couple minutes with that patient to make it a, make a difference. Absolutely. And then, and then lastly, uh, what I have here is have a reason for picking the lens. That was heavy, uh, Dr. Roof. I really love that. Have a reason for picking a lens. Some of us just pick up a contact lens and go with the flow, uh, maybe because it increases your bottom line, maybe because it's the closest thing to you. But I love that. Really think about why you're picking this lens. Look at the base curvature. Look at um, you know, the wettability of the lens. Look at the diameter. Let's really make sure that we're picking the right solution for our patients. If not, we're going to lose these patients to online. There are online vendors. There are online disruptors. Treat this no different than you do your refraction. You don't want to lose your glasses prescriptions to online. So that's why it's important to talk about why that quarter shift makes a change, what lens option goes the best with those glasses. We need to do the same thing when it comes to contact lenses. So I love that point. And just remember, material, lubrication, optics, those are key things. I love everything that was discussed tonight. We have some OGs on this call. And we also have some young OGs on this call. And um, I love all the information that's been here uh, this evening. Um, let's get into it. We're going to get into the uh, giveaway. Was there any last points that anybody wanted to cover before we jump into the winners this evening? Yeah, no, I just like to say one more thing. Um, you know, Sorry, have a reason to pick the lens, like you said, and then share that reason with the patient. Make sure you're educating them about why you're making the choice that you're making. Patients love it when they feel like, you know, you're taking the time to really customize the care to them. Um, and that makes a big difference in our patients when we, when we take the time to do that and educate them about it. Yeah. I love yeah, it. I, I love, love it. what you said about sort of, you know, the dis online retailers and things, you know, patients kind of might kind of be feel like they're being inconvenienced to come and see us every year. And so just like you said, Daryl, by telling them why you're picking a lens, by mentioning the innovation, by offering them new stuff, that's something that an online retailer can't do for them um, and customize that to them. So you really are able to put value into what they're what they're getting from you. That's right. I mean, you got to put yourself in the patient's shoes. You want to know what you're getting and why you're getting it. So explain everything from top to bottom. Make that patient feel great. Make them feel special and elevate that patient care. It's no doubt about it. Viviana, anything else you want to take the last words before we jump into the winners? Yeah, I think that I actually just had contact lens um, clinic with Dr. Roof this past Saturday, and she made such a great point when she was like, when the patient comes to see you, you really want to educate them and personalize the exam um, to cater towards them, because obviously we are much better, or we'd like to think we're at least better doctors than um, the vendors on 1-800-CONTACTS, because we can really cater and personalize our contact lens prescription for that patient so they can successfully and comfortably wear those contact lens. I love it. And, you know, everyone's echoing patient relationships, heart face or heart emoji, whatever you want to call that. It is there. We have nothing but love. And Isaac, you know, great point. Planning the seed early is really the investment in the solution of contact lenses. Woo, man. Everyone's pumped up today. Dr. Roof, <laughs> everybody loves you. <laughs> Raise the roof. Raise the roof, right? Woo, woo. <laughs> Now, you know you can't get on a call with myself and uh, Dr. Farnick. I mean, we're all about the idea. I think Jeff used to say that to me <laughs> when, when he was a student. I think that came up then. Yeah, not the first time or the last time I'll hear that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's jump into uh, the winners for this evening, all right? Now, sorry if I mess your name up. I tend to do that. So, you know, please forgive me. Uh, but for the first winner, we have Aaron Cranning. Aaron Cranning. Great. Then we have our second winner, Daylin Wynn. And then our third winner, Tassan Desmise. I will email you your gift cards for Amazon. Each one of you will get a $100 gift card on behalf of Defocus nice. Media. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. Um, 
thank you, Johnson and Johnson Vision, for just being great. You know, this has been a fantastic uh, series. We have one more left on Jan or excuse me, April twenty fourth, and we're super excited to uh, host that last one. But guess what? We're bringing back another series. All right, so don't all think right. this is the last one. We're going to get this <laughs> right. thing back up, you guys. So uh, be on the lookout. But thank you so much for tuning in. Stay healthy, stay positive, and stay blessed. And until next time, peace. All right, colleagues, and it's a wrap. Thank you dearly for hanging out with the Defocus Media team. We hope truly something resonated with you. And if it did, be sure to give us five stars. And make sure you follow us on all social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, you named it. And our handle is at Defocus Media on all platforms. And until next time, be sure to keep it 2020.